हेलो फ्रेंड्स हेलो माय यंग लर्नर्स वेलकम यू टू द क्लास ऑफ इंग्लिश एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ ह्यूमरस अ वंडरफुल स्टोरी बाय रस्किन बॉन्ड फ्रॉम योर टेक्स बुक मोमेंट्स एंड द नेम ऑफ द स्टोरी इज द एडवेंचर्स ऑफ टोटो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स द मोमेंट यू हियर द वर्ड एडवेंचर वॉट कम्स टू योर माइंड definitely you must be thinking about the words like risk courage endurance determination will power presence of mind yes anyone who is adventurous will also have these qualities now this story this humorous story is about a very interesting character that is toto and who is toto i think from the picture itself you have guessed that yes it is about a monkey now this story is written by author ruskin bond my dear children you all have heard his name he is not new to us but we should also know about his life he was born on 19 may 1934 in kasoli a place in himachal pradesh He is an eminent contemporary Indian writer of British descent. Yes, he is of British descent because his grandfather, who was a Britisher, he had migrated, or you can say, he had come to India to serve under British rule. And after that, his father was born here, and he was born in India. So you can say he is an Anglo-Indian. He is he studied in Bishop Cotton School in Shimla. He wrote his first short stories Untouchable at the age of 16 and his first novel The Room on the Roof very popular one it's a semi autobiographical story written at the age of 17 and for this story for this novel he got the uh, the prize John Lewin Rice prize in 1957 Ruskin Bond is considered to be an icon among Indian writers and children's authors and a top novelist. Yes, he prefers to write for children. He enjoys writing children's stories and children uh, stories, novels, poems and all. He has written more than 500 short stories, various essays and poems. He is best loved and most admired chronicler of contemporary India. And for this he has been awarded with several prizes in 1992 he was awarded with sahitya academy award for his short story our trees still grow in dehra in 1999 he got padma shri for his contribution to children's literature in 2014 he got padma bhushan and in 2017 he received lifetime achievement award My dear children when you read his stories you'll find that all his characters are mainly the people from his own life you'll find an autobiographical touch in his writings and his themes are always around the nature animals because he loved to spend time in nature now my dear children let us start the story without much time Okay so we have have you ever heard of a baby monkey as a pet you all have heard of pets like dogs cats squirrels but have you ever heard anybody having a monkey as a pet very rare so here we are going to read about a about a baby monkey toto who was kept as a pet now we'll see how he became a pet and what happened now when you say monkey the moment you listen to this word monkey or you think of this animal definitely you you start thinking it must be mischievous is it also so in this story let us see whether he was also mischievous or a very quiet and calm uh, docile kind of creature this story is basically a humorous and adventurous story of toto the pet here goes the story Grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver for the sum of five rupees. Now you must be thinking five rupees in today's time. No, my dear children, when this story was written long back, this five rupees also ha- also had some value. 
right? And now these days, even if you multiply it several hundreds, you'll find that it is worth 500 rupees or so. So, uh, grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver for the sum of 5 rupees. The Tonga driver used to keep the little red monkey tied to a feeding trough. What is trough? It is a container for feeding animals. You will see it in the picture also. And the monkey looked so out of place there that grandfather decided he would add the little fellow to his private zoo. From here we get to know that grandfather had a private zoo and he had several animals kept in that. He was a he was an animal lover and here we will see that he found this creature one day with this Tonga driver and he was he didn't find it appropriate there so he thought of bringing it and adding it to his private zoo. Now you'll see Tonga driver how it looks like and a feeding trough and he is tied to that. Toto was a pretty monkey. How can you say he was a pretty monkey? You just see his appearance on the uh, on the screen. You can see the picture here. His bright eyes sparkled with mischief beneath deep set eyebrows and his teeth which were a pearly white. Pearly white means it sh it shines or it it is as bright as pearl. Pearl is a kind of gem. Were very often displayed in a smile that frightened the life out of elderly Anglo-Indian ladies. Yes, we'll see that here at Anglo-Indian ladies because uh, he, um, Ruskin Bond is talking about the place where he lived and he, he's, he's, uh, f he finds a lot of Anglo-Indian ladies there and he finds that Toto, his smile and all really frightens them. But his hands looked dried up as though they had been pickled in the sun for many years. Yet his fingers were quick and wicked. And his tail, you see, what tail, while adding to his good looks. Now, grandfather believed a tail would add to anyone's good looks, right? You see what he used to do also served as a third hand. You see how he is using his tail in clutching. He could use it to hang from a branch and it was capable of scooping away, scooping up any delicacy that might be out of reach of his hands. So he was very, very clever. Grandfather always, grandmother always fussed when grandfather brought home some new bird or animal. Now grandfather was fond of animals but grandmother did not at all favor uh, these things and she always got annoyed with uh, grandfather bringing animals and putting them in the zoo. So it was decided. Now what was decided? You see how uh, intelligent was grandfather. So it was decided that Toto's present should not be kept, should be kept a secret from her until she was in a particularly good mood. So this was kept as a secret that Toto has been brought and added to his zoo. Grandfather and I put him away in a little closet opening into my bedroom wall. So there was a kind of, uh, you can say a shelf kind of thing, a closet and where he was being put, where he was tied securely or so we thought to a peg. Peg you can see where we also hang uh, uh, our clothes or some uh, purse or uh, anything that you were belt, anything that you would ha like to hang, you can just hang it there. So he was also, you can say it's a kind of hook and it was fastened into the wall. A few hours later, when grandfather and I came back to release Toto, we found that the walls, which had been covered with some ornamental paper, chosen by grandfather now stood out as naked brick and plaster so they didn't find toto there rather whatever was there had come out the peg in the wall had been wrenched from its socket and my school blazer which had been hanging there was in shreds i wondered what grandmother would say but grandfather didn't worry he seemed pleased with Toto's performance. You see the difference in grandfather's approach or attitude towards this Toto. He didn't find it wrong, whatever he did. And he was very pleased that Toto is quite active. He's clever, he says he's clever, said grandfather. Given time, 
I am sure he could have tied the torn pieces of your blazer in a rope and made his escape from the window. So you, as I mentioned it earlier also in the introduction, that this story contains lot of elements of humor. And here we find how grandfather has analyzed his mischiefs. You see, what he says is that perhaps he could have applied his mind and used the torn pieces and tied it, made it a rope, and he would have escaped from the window. His presence in the house still a secret. Toto was now transferred to a big cage in the servants' quarters where a number of grandfather's pets lived very sociably. To together, a tortoise, a pair of rabbits, a tame squirrel and for a while my pet goat. So these were the things kept in, kept there and he was, Toto was another one, another addition there. But the monkey wouldn't allow any of his companions to sleep at night. So grandfather who had to leave Dehradun next day to collect his pension in Saharanpur decided to take him along. Unfortunately, I could not accompany grandfather on that trip, but he told me about it afterwards. A big black canvas kit bag was provided for Toto. This, with some straw at the bottom, became his new abode, his new home. When this bag was closed, there was no escape. Toto could not get his hands through the opening and the canvas was too strong for him to bite his way through. His efforts to get out only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor or occasionally jump into the air. An exhibition that attracted a curious crowd of onlookers on the Dehradun railway platform. So whatever Toto was doing inside the bag all those activities, activities really attracted the attention of all those people who were there at the railway platform. Toto remained in the bag as far as Saharanpur. But while grandfather was producing his ticket at the railway tur turnstile, turnstile means, you'll see it in the picture, it's a mechanical gate consisting of revolving horizontal arms fixed to a vertical post, allowing only one person at a time to pass through. You can see it in the picture. Toto suddenly poked his head out of the bag and gave the ticket collector a wide grin. The poor man was taken aback. But with great presence of mind and much to grandfather's annoyance, he said, Who is he here? The ticket collector. Sir, you have a dog with you. You'll have to pay for it accordingly. This was something that the ticket collector immediately told grandfather. In vain did grandfather take Toto out of the bag. In vain did he try to prove that a monkey did not qualify as a dog or even as a quadruped. Toto was classified a dog by the ticket collector and three rupees was the sum handed over as his fare. Finally, nothing worked out and the ticket collector had to be given three rupees for carrying Toto, whom he considered to be a dog. Then grandfather, just to get his own back, took from his pocket our pet tortoise and said, What ma must I pay for this since you charge for all animals? Now grandfather wanted to ask this. He had a query and he thought that maybe he will ask for the tortoise also. The ticket collector looked closely at the tortoise, prodded it with his forefinger, gave grandfather a pleased and triumphant look and said, No charge, it is not a dog. When Toto was finally accepted by grandmother, he was given a comfortable home in the stable. Now what happens is that he comes back and the story, the scene changes. Here now we see that grandmother finally accepted Toto as their pet, as a member in their family. Now we have this Toto who was finally accepted by grandmother was given a comfortable home. And where was it? It was in a stable where he had for a companion the family donkey. 
And what was the name of the donkey? Nana. On Toto's first night in the stable, Grandfather paid him a visit to see if he was comfortable. To his surprise, he found Nana, without apparent cause, pulling at her halter and trying to keep her head as far as possible from a bundle of hay. That means Grandfather found something is going on, right? Something was trying to pull at her rope or the strap. Grandfather gave Nana a slap across her haunches and she jerked back, dragging Toto with her. He had fastened onto her long ears with his sharp little teeth. You can see it in the picture also, what Toto was doing, trying to trouble this, this horse, uh, this donkey, right? And you can see that how he, he was trying to trouble him. Toto and Nana never became friends. They could never become friends. A great treat for Toto during cold winter evenings was the large bowl of warm water given him by grandmother for his bath. He would cunningly test the temperature with his hand, then gradually step into the bath, first one foot, then the other, until he was into the water up to his neck. Once comfortable, he would take the soap in his hands or feet and rub himself all over. You see how quickly, how intelligently he had learned everything. When the water became cold, he would get out and run as quickly as he could to the kitchen fire in order to dry himself. If anyone laughed at him during this performance, Toto's feelings would be hurt and he would refuse to go on with his bath. One day Toto nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive. A large kitchen kettle had been left on the fire to boil for tea and Toto, finding himself with nothing better to do, decided to remove the lid. Very clever, very naughty, very notorious. Finding the water just warm enough for a bath, he got in with his head sticking out from the open kettle. This was just fine for a while, until the water began to boil. Toto then raised himself a little, but finding it cold outside, sat down again. He continued hopping up and down for some time, until grandmother arrived and howled him, half boiled out of the kettle. If there is a part of the brain specially devoted to mischief, that part was largely developed in Toto. That was the conclusion by grandfather. He was always tearing things to pieces. Whenever one of my aunts came near him, he made every effort to get hold of her dress and tear a hole in it. You can see now while we are reading that what all activities he has done which has created problem to others not only those who were kept in the in the zoo his private zoo but he had also troubled the others like aunt here he whenever he gets uh, a chance to ca catch hold of her clothes he would take it and tear it into pieces one day at lunch time another act another mischievous uh, activity one day, at lunchtime, a large dish of pulao stood in the center of the dining table. We entered the room to find Toto stuffing himself with rice. Okay? My grandmother screamed and Toto threw a plate at her. You see, now he is not just mischievous. You can see that her, uh, his activities are now troubling the members of the family. One of my aunts rushed forward and received a glass of water in the face. When grandfather arrived, Toto picked up the dish of pulao and made his exit through, the, through a window. We found him in the branches of the jackfruit tree, the dish still in his arms. You can see the tree and you can see the fruits. He did not leave a chance. He just made an exit and took his shelter on the street and he was happily enjoying the pulao. He remained there all afternoon, eating slowly through the rice, 
determined on finishing every grain. And then, in order to spite grandmother, who had screamed at him, he threw the dish down from the tree and chattered with delight when it broke into a hundred pieces. Now, you can see that Toto's activities were now turning out to be destructive. He started destructing the things. He started destroying the things, breaking the things. And this caused a lot of discomfort to every member of the family. And after this incident, they started thinking what to do, whether we should keep him or we should think about making him uh, go somewhere else or handing him over to some other person. Obviously, Toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long. Yes, because when we say pet, we say the pet is tamed, listens to you, uh, follows your instructions, obeys you and is not creating a kind of disturbance or does not annoy anyone, does not annoy anyone. So here we see that Toto's activities, perhaps they were very, uh, 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 they were not very creative. They were very destructive activities and he was uh, in a way making the people very uncomfortable. Even grandfather realized that. We were not well to do and could not afford the frequent loss of dishes, clothes, curtains and wallpapers. He had uh, he had broken the dishes, he had spoiled the clothes, he had uh, made holes in the curtains, even he had torn the wallpaper. So these things were not very, they were not appreciated by anyone. And grandfather who had brought Toto with lot of interest from that Tonga driver also realized that he did something. So he, he, maybe his decision was not correct. So grandfather found the Tonga driver and sold Toto back to him for only three rupees. So here we get to know that Toto's activities finally did not uh, find a place or were not appreciated in the family and the decision was taken by grandfather that he should be handed over to the person from whom he had brought. And had Toto been uh, not that destructive, had Toto been obedient, uh, a properly uh, disciplined uh, creature, then perhaps grandfather would have loved to keep him for longer time, right? So it is said that sometimes these animals who are kept as pets, they definitely give us a good life, some time to uh, enjoy with them some pleasure but the moment their activities go beyond size that means they they are not in control then it becomes uh, essential for everyone for the especially the owner to decide what to do whether to keep it or to just send him this is all about the story i think all of you have understood and enjoyed the story now we'll move on to the questions quickly First question, these are all textual questions and these are long answer type questions. So please see the question and see what is to be written and how is it to be answered because these are not short answer type questions. How does Toto come to grandfather's private zoo? There's a long reason for that. The writer's grandfather liked to collect animals and had made a zoo at home. One day he saw a red colored monkey tied to a trough with a Tonga driver. He liked the monkey and wanted to add it to his collection. He bought Toto from the Tonga driver for a sum of 5 rupees. So this is how Toto got an entry into grandfather's house. Toto was a pretty monkey. If you remember in the beginning of the story we I had discussed his appearance. So here we are going to discuss his appearance. In what sense Toto is pretty? You talk about his eyes. You talk about his teeth, you talk about his tail. You see how it is given. The writer says that Toto was pretty. He had bright shining eyes which were full of mischief. His teeth were pure pearly white. He had a long tail which was like a third hand for him. The writer's grandfather felt that a tail added to the beauty of an animal. So Toto was thought to be a pretty animal. Third question. 
Why does grandfather take Toto to Saharanpur and how? Why does the ticket collector insist on calling Toto a dog? So there are basically three questions. Why did he take him? How did he take him? And why did the ticket collector insist on calling Toto a dog? These can be treated as three individual questions also. So we'll be answering them individually. Toto was kept in a bag, big cage, where a number of grandfather's pets lived very sociably together. But Toto was a mischievous monkey. He wouldn't allow any of his companions to sleep at night. So grandfather finally decided to take Toto to Saharanpur. This was the reason. Now, how was he carried? He was carried in a canvas bag, a thick canvas bag, and for which it was difficult for Toto to really bite. So he could not have any escape. or There was no opening for uh, Toto to come out. Then ticket collector, why do you think he insisted on calling Toto a dog? Because he wanted grandfather to pay the monkey's ticket. He collected monkey's fare with a great presence of mind. And how can you say the ticket collector was intelligent? Because he finally could manage to get those three rupees from, the, from grandfather, saying that the monkey was a dog. How does Toto take a bath? Where has he learned to do this? How does Toto almost boil himself alive? Again, we have three questions. How does Toto take a bath? How, uh, how do you uh, explain it? Toto would check the temperature of the water by inserting his hand in it. Very intelligent. Then he would step into the tub, one foot at a time. Finally, he would sit in it with his face out. Then he would rub soap on his body. When the water became cold, he would jump out and run to the stove in the kitchen to dry himself. He had learned this thing, how? From the writer. He used to observe the narrator very keenly. And you know, monkeys are uh, very uh, intelligent in copying, imitating. One day, a large kitchen kettle had been left on the fire to boil for the tea. So Toto decided to remove the lid. Finding the water just warm enough for a bath, he got into it. It was just fine for a while until he, the water began to boil. Toto then wanted to go out, but finding it cold inside, sat down again. He continued hopping up and down for some time until grandmother arrived and howled him half boiled out of the kettle. All these answers you'll find in the text itself. You don't have to think. Just read it properly. You will get, uh, you will get uh, quickly uh, how to answer. Then next is, why does the author say Toto was not the sort of pet, pet we could keep for long? Why does he say so? The author says that Toto was not the kind of pet that they could keep for long because he was extremely mischievous. He destroyed many things. He tore the wallpapers, clothes and curtains. He broke dishes too. The family could not afford frequent loss of these things and so he decided to get rid of Toto. So this is how we have uh, comprehended the whole story and you get to know that keeping pets is a very good thing but you have to tame them properly you have to and sometimes even taming is not possible they uh, if we have pets like Toto it is difficult for us to tame them so we have to think before we keep a pet whether it can be tamed whether it can be made disciplined or not otherwise they are going to invite problems for us rather than bringing pleasure and uh, joy for us right so with this we come to the end of the story i hope all of you have enjoyed uh, this journey with toto the story of toto thank you have a good day